Join us, MrTruck.com, for truck reviews, trade reviews, and accessory reviews. Mr. Truck here, reviewing the 2021 Honda Ridgeline. Now, I'm a fan of Ridgeline. I call them a truck. I mean, it's not a big deal. I think the truck in the future are going to be a lot different than the trucks we have now. This is kind of heading that way. Sometime you're going to see the full-size half tons with independent four-wheel suspension. Well, it's coming. Actually, the Honda, the Ford Lightning has it when it comes out. So, trucks are changing. So, you want to get the truck that fits you, but you can't call them all one thing or the other. You know, it's, you want to make sure it's the right truck for you. And this is the right truck for a lot of people. Now, I pull too many trailers, I haul too much stuff, so it's not the kind of truck that I'm looking for. But, I mean, if you're if you're basically using it to drive to work, and you're not going off-road, you're not pulling over 5,000 pounds, which fits a lot of people, I mean, you can still go to, to Home Depot with the giant bed it has. You can haul plywood, you can haul any of those things. But it's, uh, it's come standard with a V6. It's come standard with four-wheel drive. It's 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, and it'll tow 5,000 pounds. But the payload, my gosh, the payload is 1583, over 1,500 pounds. So you can haul adults in it. You can still have room like now. This trailer is 4,900 pounds. So, you know, it gives me over 1,000 pounds left of payload, cargo passengers, because I'll use up 500 pounds or so, 490 pounds, tongue weight. So I've got a lot left over. So it's actually somebody put full-size people in. It's so wider than the normal mid-size. And, you know, of course, it handles a little better than normal mid-size because it's different. So, you know, I think the Ranger is the highest towing in the mid-size class is 7,500. So 5,000 is not the top of the line, but a lot of people never tow more than 5,000 pounds, whether it's, you know, a jet ski trailer or a small RV or whatever you're doing with it. But it's still very useful. I'll show you the trunk that's still in the back. I still like that trunk. The two-way tailgate, I love that. So many things about this that I really like. And it's a nine-speed. It gets 24 miles a gallon on the highway. According to DP, I'm getting a little better than 24 right now. With the trailer, though, I'm getting around closer to 14, which in the mountains, climbing all these mountains at a higher elevation, I think that's very impressive. So it's a good truck for a lot of purposes. And we're running up and down the mountains, and I'll show you, you know, a few more things about it. It's got a lot of features, a lot of features to go over. This is the Sport model. And the Sport model, you know, it's got that look to it, you know, it looks a little more sporty. Uh, and it, uh, it's part of that new Honda performance development is what the numbers say on it. So, you know, they're trying to, you know, spiff up their image or whatever they're doing for marketing. But it's got these gold wheels as part of this package. It's fiery red and it's uh, a very comfortable truck. So I'm going to still call it a truck. You can call it whatever you want to call it. But that's what it is. We're up here in Estes Park and the wind is not blowing 90 miles an hour today. It's probably blowing about 20. So things are improving. Things are going to get better this year. So come join us for the review. Yep, it's Honda's new thing. HPD, Honda Performance Development. This is the sport model. So it's got all the decals. It's got the fender flares, the gold wheels. This is the new one. 2021 so try and get more aggressive look and this is the sport model and it does have a bigger grill different badging and I just popped the hood let's look under here because this will surprise some of you underneath all the plastic this is a 3.5 v6 which is what my EcoBoost is it just happens to have a couple of turbos but this is a fairly large v6 look is different you can get different color patterns too I think I would choose the white one with these wheels but and of course we're towing my tilt trailer which weighs 4,900 pounds we're using a weight distributing hitch it's an empty trailer easy towing now let's see I'm not straight I don't know if I can drop that tailgate I did by golly not even straight and I'm missing the hitch and the jack and everything. That's so cool. Now look at this bed. Hardly any fender wells. Gives you more room. There's my blocks I use with the jack. It's got all these fender or all these hooks to tie down your ATVs, your motorcycles. So you got four of them. 
Oh, you got four on each side. So you got eight of these tie downs. Very nice. And look under here. This is a lockable storage unit. There goes my blocks. Because this is a poly composite reinforced with steel, is what the bed's made out of. Poly, what's a composite with steel reinforcement. But there's your bed. I think it said, I'll look at the stats when we get inside. I think it's 18 inches deep, but it's big. I mean, I could fold up in there, I think. I've had my granddaughters in here before. But that is so cool. Very usable space. And it locks. But wait, there's more. Close the tailgates, a little heavy. Then underneath here, okay, there. There's your sport all wheel drive badging. HPD. Stands out in the crowd for sure. But underneath here, wait a minute, it says right there, release. Ah, oh, found it. They even label the bumper, release. Release me. I can't quite open this because of the jack, but on the trader. But look at that, man. You open that up, take your forklift and throw your wood pellets in here. That's what we're going to do. That is cool. You get right up to that bumper with a forklift. If you want to drop your hay or your grain or your wood chips or whatever you want to put in there. I mean, this has actually got pretty good sized cargo area. Cubic feet. I don't know if this one still has the speakers in that front wall or not. There's a little storage compartment right there. I'm not sure it doesn't hold a whole lot. But it's got lighting back here and it's all that standard. Pretty cool truck. Now let me go over some of the things inside. Okay, back here. The boys got a big giant camera bag. Actually got two camera bags. Let me move this one out of the way for you. And the seats, actually are pretty nice seats. I think they're pretty wearable. But you lift this up, let's see, is there a latch? Yep, there's a latch. Gotta watch all these signs. It says it's got a latch. And then it's got a little that you know that's that's a really a cool design. And the reason it's so cool is because look how tall, how high that is off the ground or off the floor. That gives you some thigh support. I always complain about motorcycles and the Tacomas because they don't give me thigh support if the seats are too close to the ground. Well, that's a neat way they did that, just so you can get your butt up in the air and have a more comfortable seat, kind of like a dining room table and chairs. The floor is pretty clear. It's got this track right there. Part of it's for latching the seat down, but you got a fairly flat floor, except for that middle piece. You could put some big screen TVs back here. Of course, you got all the little things on the back of the seat. A few cubby holes up there in here. Looks like your air comes to the back, your air conditioning. And it has, if I can get it past my big giant camera bag, it's got a folding armrest and a cup holder. That's very necessary in holding grandkids, believe me. You gotta have all that. And you got cup holders in the doors all the way around. Look at that, it's got a fuel button in the door where you can actually find it. A lot of these vehicles don't have it where you can find it. And there's, of course, your lights, your lane departure, your mirror adjustment, and your econo mode for better fuel mileage. Probably slows the RPMs down, but that is good. And what's really cool inside here is your cruise control. One button sets it. Instead of turning it on first and then set it, as you just set it. That makes more sense. Everybody else should do that. Get rid of that other button to turn it on. Just have the set button turn it on. And there you can see the dash. It's pretty usable. It's, it's simple. There's not a whole lot there. Coolant, fuel, and RPM. All kinds of things pop up in the middle. So you can see right there, that's what the computer says. 13 miles to the gallon. I got 227 miles yet to go, and I've got a little over half a tank. A little over half a tank. I mean, I can reach everything on this real easily. And then there's my tire pressure monitor. You see the green dash because we're not moving. But then there's that push button four wheel drive, or push button transmission. So you got to pull this back to get it in reverse. And you can do neutral and then there's you can uh, go to sport mode or in in drive and then down there here's the modes like if i push the modes you'll see it pop up right there if you can see that let me zoom in on it go through the modes there's normal snow mud sand and that's good that's good oh stability is reduced when i'm in sand mode good to know
cool. Normal. There's my backup camera so I can see the trailer. It's pretty decent. I wish it had the line right in the middle, line up the ball and the coupler. I should just had a button for the station. All it has is the volume button, which, you know, they want you to use your phone for everything. Don't go away, Mr. TV. We'll be right back. <laughs> Watch this. See, it's in reverse now. Now I'm going to open the door and it automatically goes into the park. So anytime you open a door, it goes to the park. So I guess it's a safety thing, but if you're flying down the road and you want to reach out and spit some of that chewing tobacco out, you may end up locking up the truck. I'm sure there's some kind of speed sensor, so at certain speeds it wouldn't jump in the park. But most people don't open the doors when they're driving, but some people do. If you didn't get it closed, you go, then you just open it and close it again. And that may cause some problems. I don't know if there's a delay, but that's something I need to ask Honda because that could be an irritation. But it's a safety thing for now. We'll just say it's a safety thing. <clears throat> but visibility is so cool. Now let's see if I can get this camera set up on the windshield wiper washer because I just think they're just so cool. See that? It's like a shower nozzle. I don't know if I can get close enough to see it. Man, this is what I gotta show my grandkids. Where is it? Where? See, you know, can't really see the nozzle. It's like a shower nozzle. It's so awesome. But sitting here, I can see it. You can see the, the round part. And it is, it's, it's a cool thing to entertain your grandkids, you know? It's what we do all of our lives. I'll show you this giant console. Past the push button shifter, past the cup holders is this thing. And it is deep. It is big. That makes it awesome. Holding armrests. The cool folding armrests. I like armrests, I like captain's chairs. And since your console is way down there, it's not a pine enough to use it for your elbow. That's what they had to do. And then inside the cubby hole, you have a couple more outlets. You get a power outlet, a 12 volt, and you got the U U Universal Serial Bus USB plug in. You also have that up here too, where of course I use all this stuff, which is good. Bears do fine with this kind of a trailer. Yeah, it's a unibody, it's all one piece. Now I want you to know how wide this is. You see back there, that trailer is eight and a half feet wide, fender to fender. And you pull up here and shoot down the line, seven feet wide now I can't be I can't be seven feet wide but it is wide it looks almost as wide as a full size but it's a little short of that I look at the temperature controls not just side to side left and right for dual temperature it's tri temperature controls you got left and right and front seats and you got a rear seat look at that man that's too cool because this is a big cabin if you want to heat or cool the whole thing it's nice to be able to have it all over front and back rows of seats good good thinking there honda ken with mr truck here with a really exciting trailer accessory you know trailer tires is a big deal you got problems especially 100 degree weather like we're having this year you know you're gonna blow tires and the tires are gonna blow take out your fender take out your clearance lights and then you go sit there in the side road fixing your tire while your horses get hot sun coming down 100 degrees no doors open and no fan it's horrible and I see it happen all the time, and so I go to higher ply tires, and I go to Tucson Tire Pressure Monitoring System. they got so many options. You can go with bands on the Alcoa wheels, that's such a small hole. You can go with the tire pressure monitoring where you have a valve stem and the, re and the relay below it, the transmitter. And then you can do the same transmitter on a band. And now the new one, I call them space balls, but they're actually tire pressure monitoring from Tucson. Ball sensors, like a ping pong ball rubber coated and you put this in your tire you, you crack open the bead throw it in there and it bounces around goes right for a little while and then once you get up to speed it just sticks to wherever it's at you know ahead of time what's going on this gives you special alerts before if the tire pressure is too high it goes off beeps and flashes too low it beeps and flashes same way with heat 
and this will save you a lot of money. You know, price of a tire will pay for one of these puppies. And why would you not want to know what's going on with your trader tires?